Foxes to Bills could be the last one of 2022. Let's see why we're going coast to coast. <laughs> Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary here, and this is McGolf Custom Clubs or McGolf Channel. And what we do here is we talk about golf club repairs, golf club reviews, and golf club fittings, all so your scores can go low. So if you would, like, subscribe, hit all that stuff you see across the bottom, and that way more of this channel, more of the word of this channel, gets out to other people interested in these topics. All right, boxes to builds. We've been going on boxes to builds all year long. I've been tracking it, right? This is actually number 23. I want to get to 24, and I might make it there uh, before the end of the year. And I got a couple of weeks, and I got plenty of stuff Mrs. McGolf is stacking up for me. So this one is a, co I call it coast to coast. Why is that? Because one of them is from Delaware, and the other one is from Oregon. And there was a similarity between the two. They both wanted wedge grinds and these wedges are going to be significantly different from one another. They're also two different kinds and then the difference is the two different kinds of builds. The first one was basically an assembly and that one is some Mizuno 923s, the hot metals, and we put some Acra 80s in there and, and we made them to a standard length. He, the golfer also sent us some Halo hybrids to go with them. Now, huh? He them oh, well, I guess we ordered them then. Anyway, the... Annie ordered the head. And Jack, yeah, I know that part. Make sure you say it. Anyway. Anyway, we had to do the build. So like everything else, we do the measuring, and we do the spining, and we do the flowing and we start assembling and we did frequency matching in this particular instance and they all came out uh, equal with each other which is really you know that's the idea of frequency matching right all right so then we got them uh, we got them glued we got them on the on the shelf waiting to go and then we did the ferrule turning we did the shaft cutting mrs mcgolf did the gripping and now it's just a matter of of uh, doing the final checks to make sure the loft and lies are correct, clean them up again when they all get a coat of wax, and out they go. And that's the, and that would be going to Delaware. Now the other one is going to Oregon. Now, this Oregon one's a little different, so we're going to watch this one. Uh, oh, and I'm going to show you the uh, the final result here. Hold on. Let's go back to the uh, the first build. The first build with the wedges that the golfer sent us were Kirkland wedges. And the Kirkland wedges are the milled face. Uh, they're very wide sole. Uh, they're a 52, 60, and, uh, 52, 56, and 60. They're all very wide sole, and he wanted a tour grind on them. All right, the, uh, the, the tour grind. The tour grind is nothing more than a little bit of heel and toe relief. And... I'm trying to get it so you can see it. There it is. So you see right up in here, there's the toe, and then there's the heel relief. And that's what we did here is we took that little piece off here. And so that when you remove it here, this allows you to open the club a little bit when it sets. You can normally set here, you would do that, and it wants to open. The toe relief I do for symmetry, and the other part is, if you have a downhill lie, then it acts kind of in the same way that that toe section does not get stuck. Now, it's really, really hard to do with very, very wide wedges because that's the whole idea is that you don't do that, okay? Uh, and so you got to, and when they get into wide wedges, you really got to get into the heel some in order for this to work. And it's not going to be like flop open per se it's going to be just enough to get you a little bit of open where these things didn't before. And this is the lob wedge. There we go. If you can see, there's a lot I, I took off of the back because this thing was way out here and it was way back in there. And, and so, and then when you do is you take off some of the back so that the trailing edge doesn't get caught, which is what I was at, what I'm going to be asked to do in the next set. So that's going to be nice. And then here's the last one. 
There we go. And you can see we have a little bit of symmetry there and a lot removed and we've got it all polished up. Now that was in the, so the real question is, well, Jim, how bad did you change it? Well, only by one swing weight. So not too bad, right? Not too bad at all. So the feel is literally not going to, you know, when you go to wedge it, it's not going to feel bad and you're going to be able to open it. Now the, the, when you get these, the thing is you just can't set it down. And if it opens up, you're like, Oh, Hey, you got, if you're going to still hit the square shot, you got to know that you got to hold it down and hold this and hold it for the square shot. So that's one of the things that we really, really have to be aware of when you ask for these particular things. Now, that was the, you know, the first build was the assembly. You've seen plenty of assembly videos and just what we were going through and I was showing you some of the finished stuff. Now, on to the other one. Okay, so, let's see what we're gonna do here today. Let's take all this stuff out. And we've got what appears to be taped up in, oh, these are the wedges. All right, so these are the Betonardi wedges that we're gonna grind on. So we'll put these off to the side. We can already see where we're going with it, okay. Now the cool part about it is, is that he sent me kind of a demo club that he wanted for swing weighting, and it's a 900 with a with a Nippon 950 GH in it. And this is the setup that we're gonna go to. Now he says, and this is the important part, when we talk about equipment, he has, apparently he's got a swing weight scale. And on his swing weight scale, this is a D3. On my swing weight scale, it's a D2. So that's, I'm glad he sent this because now I know that I can build a D2 on mine and, and it'll be D3 on his. Alrighty, so what are we doing? Well, we've got these, and these are the Nippon 950s. Now, he wanted, he wants these hard stepped, and he starts with a five, so that means we start with a six, and that's hard stepping. It's one less than, than you need. All right, throw that away. And what did he have in him? Well, he had in the, uh, the 950GH Neo. Now the 950GH Neo, and this is in a, a uh, SR, so that they're supposedly in that beginner in-between flex. And these tend to play just a little bit more firm than advertised. And they're a little firmer profile to begin with. The 950 GH is a little softer, a little easier to turn over. And that's what we're gonna go to. So we have our five shafts. We have our four clubs. Uh, I think she maybe thought maybe we were gonna do that one. Let's make sure of this. One, two, three, four, five, six. As you saw, I'm one shaft short. And what we have to do is hard step this. So instead of a five going into five, six and six, seven, seven, so on, we have to put a six and a five, seven and a six, and so on and so forth like that. Now, uh, what we didn't get was the pitching wedge. There was a mix up in the order because we had two sets of almost the exact same thing and it just missed it out. So it's not a big deal. We just got to order one and we're gonna be on our way. Now, what we're gonna do here is, is that this is about the, basically the tearing apart of the clubs and then a very quick installation. And, and, but we're gonna wait for that other shaft so they all get treated the same. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the, uh, into the grinding of the wedges. So let's go take some clubs apart. All right, so we got the other shaft back and I did not have the time to prep them. So we're gonna show you what we're doing for taking them apart. The, uh, these are the 919 Tours, all right? The 919 Tours from, uh, from Mizuno. Now I have a set of these. These things play very, very well. Now they are not as forgiving as hot metals 
and they're not supposed to be. These are the, for the guys that are very good ball strikers, okay? Not that I'm one, I just happen to get through it because of the thinner, the thinner sole, and I don't take a big divot, and this thing helps me hit the ball better. So, what do we have to do here? Well, this is going to be a taper tip shaft, taper tip hosel, 0.355. Now, in most cases, uh, you could try and save the hosel, but it's a 35 cent part to a dollar part. And it's really not worth it. And a lot of times what it's doing is it binds, it helps bind this head. Now you're like, oh, it doesn't hold it on. You're correct, it doesn't hold it on. But what happens is if you get glue in this particular area in that joint that's between there and there, then it can hold on to it, all right? So we're going to remove this. All right, about 30 seconds worth, a little bit more than I wanted, but it's, it makes it soft. And you can pull it back. All right, so now we have it pulled back, and that's really what we want, right? We want it out of the way. And there we go, we got it broken free. Now, if you look here, there's a lot of glue there. That's a lot of glue holding that on. So this has been put together very, very well. And, and so now we're gonna have to really give it some heat to get rid of it. All right, let's see if it'll come off. Normally you can just do this with a hand twist. And not yet, oh my. We're gonna try and knock some of this out. Maybe that'll help. There we go. Like I said, I know this is put in good, so we're gonna have to give it a little bit more heat. That was a little bit of effort. That's the way it's going to be, but out it comes. Now we got to clean this thing out. The hosel, see all that white stuff that's in there? That's got to go. Okay, so now we've got it all out. You can see a little bit, it's a little bit better. Now when you do get, get done with this, while it's still warm, what you want to do is clean up the outside. Whether you use a waver wheel or a, or a unstitched buffing wheel, it would really depend on the kind of coating. Now, this is a very tough club. It really is a very tough club. However, it does have a painted surface on it. So what I tend to do is I'll use the unstiff buffing wheel in order to try and polish it off. And that's what you get the look of, right? You get the look of it like that. And it looks pretty decent. I mean, it's a used club to be sure, and it's had its day, and there you go. All right, so I gotta get four more of these done, and then we'll talk about putting them back together. Okay, so now we had them apart and I had a chance to weigh everything just like I do in my normal assembly. The shafts are in pretty good shape. I kind of like them. I measured all the heads and it took a lot of cleaning because there's a little bit extra glue on the bottom. And that's okay, that just means it was, you know, a little bit was used, no big deal, but it was, they were put together very, very well. So after we got them all cleaned up, we weighed them. And what I'm looking for is a seven gram increment between, the, between all the heads. I got that. Now, what we're looking for is that the golfer wants a D3 swing weight, and he sent me a, a sample club, <laughs> which was really quite handy. And, uh, and these things are made to be at a D2 already, right? And what we're doing is we're adding length. We add length, we add swing weight. In this particular instance, we're gonna add, oh, from his standard plus a half, and he said another, uh, eighth of an inch. So when we look at Mizuno's, they talk about 37 and a quarter. He's going to go to 38 and a half, uh, probably plus another eighth. So 38 and three eighths. That's pretty much the number. So we're not going up a tremendous amount. Okay. Probably two swing weight points worth. So we're looking at D4. Now, if we go back and we look at it again, 
that we went down in weight. Normally these swing weights, when we talk about these tolerances are used, we're using a 120, right? A 120 to 110 range, and we're going down 95. So we're gonna lose, you know, say, a, about two swing weight points in the shaft. So we go back down to D4, we might get into that D2, D3 range again. So, and because we're, we're using the same identical grip, so that shouldn't be a problem. So this is the thing that we're trying to, when you do these kinds of repairs, you've got to think through how close are you going to be because you have to have a tolerance. Uh, it, it's a rare animal, you know, if you're doing them one at a time, cutting them down, and then you get too far, and now you got to add weight, and it just you know, for one swing weight point, which nobody's going to feel save a professional, uh, I'd say you're in a pretty good shape because the length of this club is even importance is going to far override the swing weight. What we like is the total weight and we're putting in a shaft that this golfer likes. Now we have a hard step these shafts. Now I get these questions a bit. What is hard stepping? All right. So hard stepping is taking that six iron shaft and put it in a five iron head the seven into the six six and the you know and so on all the way down to where you're putting a pitching wedge shaft into a nine iron now the real question is well what are you going to put in the pitching wedge nine nine times out of hundred it's another pitching wedge however in this case we're going to put in a stiff shaft of that same model right instead of an r because we had r's in them now we're going to make them that last one's going to have an s so what does that do to the club's frequency or flex? Well, it makes it stiffer when you hard step it or more flexible when you soft step it by about a third of a flex, right? By a third of a flex. So if you were in the middle of the regular range, then you would be at the bottom of the regular, bottom of the regular range when you soft step or the closer to the top, right? Closer to the top, like, um, four and three quarters, you know, of the regular range, or, you know, three quarters of the regular range, and where that stiff would be very much in line, you know, be very, very close. It could be right there on the bottom of the stiff or in the middle, so it won't be too far apart. So that's what we're doing. So how do we do that? Well, first we've got to abrade the shafts. I abrade the shafts using my 1x42 felt, or my 1x42 sanding belt, Run about 1800 RPM. I use about an 80 gram or 80 grit sandpaper, maybe up to a 120. In this case, what you're seeing is probably about 100. And what I do is you just want to make sure that you take the chrome off and make a nice rough surface because the inside of these hosels have grooves in there to help the epoxy bond. That's why they were put together so well. So when we go through there and we get all these done, now we have that nice rough surface for all that epoxy. When we go to, now, when we go to make the epoxy, I have a choice. If I need to get it done very, very fast, I will use the 3M DP810 or 810DP Black, whatever we want to call it. And that is very fast cure, gets it out. It's basically tour glue. Now, the other glue that I use is the 3M 420DP uh, Black. And that is specifically for golf clubs by 3M. And it, it has a, about a 20 minute gel time there's different times you know you can mix them up and before it starts to get gooey that's gel time and then there's the cure time after that there's workability you get in the club when can you use it and then cure time they're not necessarily all the same but if you get to the very end you, you should never have a problem so we put the two together it's a two to one ratio that's held by the gun and then we stir it and i stir it for about 60 seconds once I get the stirring done for about 60 seconds, that's taking all the bubbles out, making sure that the hardener and the epoxy part are very well mixed. I add the, the, the center beads. And the centering beads are just exactly what they sound. They get around the outside of the shaft in order to further center the shaft into the hosel. We're only talking about a 0.1, a 0.01 actually, uh, to get all the way around, but it helps, makes me feel better. And then once we get them in there, we get them lined up the way we want. I tap them down so that they're all centered so that we make sure that you're at the bottom of the shaft into the bottom of the hosel. And then I put tape on it so that I don't have any ferrule creep and we just let them glue. So that's where we're at right now. We're waiting for them to glue. Once we get done, we're gonna finish the ferrules. 
Once we finish the ferrules, we're going to cut them to length. We're going to do a quick swing weight measurement to make sure we're in good shape. And we should have a done set of clubs. Now these are going to have the black ferrules just like they had, so it doesn't look like we did too much of a change to them. And they're a very nice setup, the, the tours. And they're just a really nice golf club. I like them. Now the last part here is that we've got to do some more wedge grinding. And we're going to do some wedge grinding because he says, and I quote, the wedges, not sure on this, but would like to open the 60 without hitting the flange before the ball. Uh, 56, a same or little less. Uh, so when you want to open it, would like to open it without hitting the flange before the ball. Alrighty, so what we're talking about there, and this is how I'm going to take it once we get this, take this off of here. All right, Bettinardi makes, they mill wedges. And uh, they put they got their standard honeycomb pattern on there. Uh, it's very nice. I do like the shape. The, the toe is nice and tall. The face is compact for those guys that don't like a big honking head wedge. And it also has some lines that are milled in. You know, it's to give it a little bit of coarseness, so to speak. All right, now if you look at this, if you look at this, you can see that there's already a little bit of heel and toe relief and it's camouflaged by these lines. It's not a great amount to be sure, but uh, we can do that. So what is he talking about? He wants to open it up. So he wants to open the club up from something like this to maybe something like that just a little. And if you can see, it's hitting right here. It's hitting right here. And that's the back end of the flange. This is exactly what he's talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to do some more of the tour grind. We're going to take, relieve this even more. And then we're going to take a good swat at this particular part of it. We're going to take off maybe, oh, I'm going to say a good three, well, about a quarter of an inch in width, not depth, but in width in order to layer that out so that he can open that up and still not hit that back end. That's what we're going to do. Now the 56 has, well, let's see what this thing has. This has eight degrees of bounce. So we're not going to kill it too bad, but you can see where a lot of the bounce was on, on the back. We're going to take some of that away. Now this one has 12 degrees of bounce. Bounce is our friend. Okay. We really like, <laughs> we really like bounce, but I'm not going to take any of the bounce out. I'm just going to take about how the, the golfer can open it up because this one is more standard grind. Although it says C, it doesn't have that, that tour grandish feel. So I'm going to take off a little bit more in the heel here, maybe just a little bit into the toe and then just knock down this thing a little bit more. And then we'll go from there. So that's what we got to do next. So let me draw it on the wedges and then we'll go over to the grinder. All right. I got the 80 on here and 80 grit on my jet and we're going to just knock this down until I don't see any more lines. So let's get some.
All right, so that's grinding. And what we did is we, you saw how I took a little bit off. We've got it polished. <clears throat> and I've got them so that, you know, they're, they're definitely not going to be going anywhere. Let's see if we can bring these guys back. There we go. I mean, that's a good, I think that's a real good look for that one. And if we switch them around, there we go. And it gets it in there. And in both cases, what I've done is with the idea that we, the golfer wants to open it up a little bit and not have that trailing edge get into the, get into the turf before he gets into the ball. And that's what we did. Now, and I made it easier so that they could turn it open and still slide underneath of it. Now you see how it's much shinier and that's because I polish it. I polish them because it puts a layer of protection on the golf club temporarily. Yeah, you go take this into a sandy area where that the sand acts just like sandpaper and it will remove that and it'll kind of get it, you know, it'll course up the, that particular area. So when you, when you do something like this and you're going to take it off, you have to keep in mind that you're taking the protective coating off and that you're going to have to take care of it. That unless you want it to rust. But it's only going to be that part of it. The rest of it won't. So you got to kind of keep that in mind. All right. So there's two different kinds of grinds. There, there's several. I did heal, I did heal relief them all. And I, I toe relieved a few, but not all. And, but the thing was, is how much we're curv curving on the back, whether we were just knocking a whole bunch off or we were just contouring a little bit. So there is some, in these particular grinds, there is some, we'll call it delicate parts that we had to deal with. And in both cases, I only took off a swing weight. Uh, this golfer likes it a little bit lighter, so that's going to be perfect for them. And in that particular one, I think it was the same case. So we're going to be in pretty good shape both cases. All right, so what I wanted to tell you about before I went to this is I glued up all the clubs and the golfer, because we uh, hard stepped it, the, the length that they wanted basically is the length that these things come out to because you, they're not infinitely long, right? They're only the, you get this half inch, maybe th five eighths of an inch longer. And that's where we were needing to be for this length. I weighed them out, did the math, and I thought I was coming out with D2. And whoo, I was off. And I need to put a six gram weight into every one of these heads in order to get to the swing weight where he needs to be. So I got to take them apart and put them back together. You don't need to see all that because it's just a matter of putting a tip weight in. I've done that. If you go back into the video library for Met Golf, you'll see me doing it. Alrighty, so coast to coast, right? Oregon, Delaware. Oregon, Delaware. And it was about how we make some golf clubs, how we do some tour grinds, making better golf clubs for better golf, scores go low, and that's what we're looking for, right? right? And that's how we want it to be. Uh, so if you got any questions on anything that you saw in here, put them down in the show notes. We'll be happy to answer them. Don't forget about our live streams on Monday, 17, 35 o'clock PM Eastern time. And you can ask me these very same questions right then and there, and, and we'll go over them. You get to see some of what's happening. Again, uh, if, if there's something that you'd like to see in that, put that down in the show notes as well. And as always, let's see your scores go low.